Good morning, Pastor Ron Jetter, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, December 31st, 2020, Thursday, the final day of this uh, unfortunately memorable, infamous, difficult year. I'll stay up till midnight just to make sure the clock doesn't go from 1231 2020 to 1301 2020. I want to see 0101 2021. Doesn't mean everything will be different. As I said before, we're going to drag a lot of 2020 with us. But it does mean that we can look forward to some new things. I look forward tomorrow morning to being able to say TGIF. But it's still 2020. There's end of the year cleanup files to go through. Today's one of those days when we go through the house and get all of our various receipts because we have to keep track of all of our housing expenses both for for filing clergy taxes and because of Sue's home office for her business that she shuts down today. Wow. So that's just basic paperwork and there's the Christmas garbage anything that can be recycled has to go into the Tahoe and anything that can't be has got to go in the the trash can or if you're British you would call it the dustbin so that the dustbin lorry can come and today is dustbin lorry today the day when the garbage truck comes by and takes those big uh, little gray dumpsters that we have by our house and get out and they pick up those cans and everything you'd leave by the curb. Now it's all automated. One person, the arms come out, pick up the thing, it goes in. One person, so less labor, uh, no back injuries, no time off for, for uh, workers' injuries on the job. But you don't put things by the curb. If it doesn't fit in that gray container, it ain't going. And it's already pretty full. We have another five bags of leaves, and I like to get a bag of leaves in every week. That's not going to happen this week. It's already too full to put another bag of leaves in. At least the leaves are bagged and off the lawn. However, I do have some lawn cleanup to do because we do have a dog now, as I've mentioned. we got to clean up the book of Exodus. It's going to sound an awful lot like a repeat. Chapters 33 through 40, the remaining chapters of the book, are not new material. They simply repeat what has gone before. What's different, though, that's what we have to look for. What's different is that they cannot unring that bell, known as the golden calf incident. That has to stay with the people, the knowledge that there are things that God will not tolerate, that God will put an into, even if it means ending human lives by the hand of one's own brothers or cousins. That's a harsh God. When we think of the God of the Old Testament, these are the chapters, chapters 30, 31, 32 in Exodus, that reinforce that picture that God is a harsh, wrathful, and vengeful God. When God says to them in chapter 32, now get out of this place and start heading up to the land that I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm going to send an angel with you, and you're going to see a pillar of pillar of cloud, and you'll follow that just like you did when you left Egypt. I'm not going to go with you, because if I did, if I were among you, I am still so mad at you. <laughs> yeah, you don't want me to go with you. Hi, pupper. Hi, girl. Yeah, I got a cami wagging her tail at me here. Nice to have a companion. Yep. More trouble, but also more blessings. Seems that things that are worthwhile also come with, with things that make it work, too. Yeah, she wants to go for a walk. Maybe she knows that it's going to be uh, above 35 today, which I hope it will once this fog burns off. Um, Got to make sure that it's not slick out there on the roads. We don't want to be falling. So Moses has already destroyed the tablets because he's so mad at the people. But we have this mentioning of the tent of the meeting set up outside of, and we're 
assuming based on chapters 20 through through 30 that that's the tabernacle that has the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the table with the bread of presence on it and all the servers. So it's curious that in chapters 33 through 40, what we have is a whole new set of commandments. It basically starts the, the story from chapter 20 to 32 and tells it over again, except we know that something has happened. Did God destroy the first tabernacle on the first covenant? We don't know. What we know is that Moses goes back up to the mountain. God says, carve me two more pieces of stone and I will write on them front and back. Moses comes down and there are some details then. Now Moses' face is glowing. And now we get the detail of how to build the Ark of the Covenant, which is the same exact details, but this time the instructions to put the tablets in the Ark of the Covenant. Put them in there quick before the people do something stupid again, before they make another idol, and Moses breaks them. And God has to write yet a third set. That would really push God over the edge. Can we push God over the edge? Is there a limit to God's patience? Well, that's a lot of what the story is about. That, that first word, I'm the Lord your God, you need no other. And if, if you follow others, you will suffer consequences. You will not have my blessings, my strength, my protection. But if you lead others astray from me, that's a whole different category of sin against God. The, the willingness to, to ignore God is human freedom, but willingly leading others away from God toward the worship of false gods, that's a whole different kind, that's spiritual, uh, spiritual homicide that you are committing. You are destroying people God's loves, destroying their soul, and that's why brother had to turn against brother in that most cruel of, of uh, orders that Moses had to give to uh, the sons of Aaron. Okay, the priesthood is going to be very seriously shrunken at the cost of the lives of those who followed and worshipped the golden calf. But it didn't say that Aaron, who fashioned the calf and led the revolt, was one of them. Hmm, curious that. Nonetheless, the remaining Levites are the priestly ones. They are the ones and their descendants who would have then been especially, uh, um, especially interested in, in maintaining the details of the construction of the ark, the construction of the tabernacle, uh, the gold, the, the kind of wood that was used and how you did it, how you set it up, who was allowed to go in it. All of that comes from the oral tradition of the priestly tribes or the Levitic tribes. And uh, the other details, as we have said, emphasize Yahweh as God. Others emphasize Yahweh as the lawgiver. So we've got oral traditions that keep the plot going, oral traditions that maintain the sovereignty and supremacy of Yahweh Elohim Adonai, the Lord God Almighty. And we have the priestly tradition that is keeping together all of those details. Um, and then we have the uh, what's called the Deuteronomic tradition, which we'll see woven in as we go on, making sure that we pay attention to laws that keep track of how the 10 laws really needed to become the 613 laws. So the retelling of those chapters, uh, it, it takes up the last eight chapters of Exodus, and I'm not gonna go through them again, but it leads us to the book of Leviticus, and I'm guessing you haven't spent a lot of time in Leviticus so January is a great time. We're not going to spend the kind of detail because it, it doesn't go through plot by plot. The Leviticus, as it suggests, is Levite material, the priestly material. They are especially interested in ritual, and ritual sacrifice is going to start that off. So we're going to look at highlights from Leviticus. So if someone says, hey, what do you know about Leviticus? 
Well, it's produced by the, the Levitic tradition and has priestly details about how to perform proper rituals, where those rituals should be performed, how to construct the elements of rituals, such as the tents, the altars, the candles, who can do those rituals, and what they need to be wearing when they perform those rituals. What would the Levites say about Zoom worship on Sunday? Hmm. I don't know. We've been visited by a plague, and we've had to make adjustments. We believe in a God who blesses us and gives us creativity to make adjustments, not a God who says, I'm going to smite you if you don't show up at my church and infect yourselves. That's not our understanding today. I will see you next year.